Okay, so I'm working away in the shop here, um, doing all sorts of projects. Uh, finally got our wood mugs done. Very nice. Um, the video link right here. Um, and when we're working, we get kind of hungry and uh, we decide to make some barbecue. Um, it's winter time, it's minus 20 outside. What are you going to do, right? So I made this little device here. Um, it's basically just a stainless steel food container that I put some uh, pipes through. Uh, the pipes that go through here, there's tons of little holes in there. You put your charcoal on the top. The air gets uh, drawn in through the, through the front here. Um, it goes all the way through. If you want, you can connect the two together, um, uh, just like that. And then you can go ahead and force feed this side and cap this side. So it forces air through your charcoal and then you can grill over top of this. The problem is, is it creates a ton of smoke, so to control the smoke, uh, we decided to make an extraction fan. So here's where usually where we grill, uh, just on top of our wood stove, and unfortunately on top of that, we have a just blower fan to blow the hot air over the stack pipe. Um, so right around next to the light, uh, right there, we're going to put a extraction fan, a vent fan. Now, because we're idiots, um, we decided that we're going to make our own. So, I got a bunch of stuff here. This is a washing machine um, motor. Like so. Now, the first thing was is to figure out exactly what RPM it runs at. Uh, to do that, I happen to have a meter for the RPM. So, the way that works is the shaft here. I put some black tape so it doesn't uh, interfere with it. You put a little reflective mark. Um, <coughs> comes with the uh, comes with everything you need. You just cut a little strip off and put it on there. Um, and then you plug it into power. Uh, this one happens to be on 240 volts so I got a capacitor and a coil to knock it down to. It splits the phase so you can use a 240 volt on 120 volt um, power. And then you plug it in, it spins, and you can take your reading. So it's 760, 769 RPM, roughly. Of course, if you do it on just on the shaft, it gives you really odd results, because it's picking up the facets. The, uh, the facet here for the pulley. Now, we have one of these squirrel cages from um, application, whatever it may have been, um, that we're going to use as the extraction, but we don't have the pulleys to make all this work. So we do have a bunch of these um, idler pulleys, quite nice, quite robust. This is a dual ball bearing um, idler pulley. It has thrust. Uh, the two ball bearings keep um, or allow you to have a bit of thrust or push on, so it could be off-centered. Um, and then this goes together like this, and then a big bolt goes through here. Sorry, goes through here to mount it into the truck. That offsets it, and then allows your um, eight groove belt to spin on it. But unfortunately, we don't have a pulley. This wants to run at about 3,000 RPM. This runs at 1,700 RPM. So I did a real quick math. Um, the pulley that it came with was a 2 inch pulley. We would need a 4 inch pulley on here to get to about 3,000, give or take. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to, I've already heat treated one of these pulleys. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and mount this pulley to here, like that, because uh, this is a uh, 2 and 3 quarter inch. And we're going to mount about an inch and a half-ish pulley here. Um, and instead of using the V-belt that it comes with, we're going to use a splined belt that comes from a treadmill. So that's going to go like that. Um, this has to be backwards, so this will actually go like that. Um, no, sorry, yeah. I, I don't remember. We'll figure it out. Uh, but yeah, like, for these belts, I do have the right size belt, um, since we have tons of parts. We've taken apart a bunch of treadmills. We do have the treadmill pulleys. Um, this one, ironically, is the correct size, but they're solidly mounted, 
and they're glued in on the shaft. So you would have to break that off and chances are we'd end up breaking them anyway. Some of them have encoders for the speed, some of them don't have encoders. But anyway, that's the project that we've taken on. Shit's in, oops, shit. Hitting stuff here. That's the project that we've uh, taken on. Uh, it should be fun. Um, it's a nice squirrel cage, it comes balanced and everything. Uh, right now my brother's in the lathe room making a pulley for this. What we ended up using is ironically, this is the same size and this fits directly on here. You know, the shitty part is, is this is in the shot for no matter where I stand, unless I'm going right here. <laughs> On here, like you can see. So we're going to put a grub screw in here. We're going to turn this into pulley, because this is, I don't have a tape measure, this is about an uh, inch and a quarter roughly. This is the original one that used to come on here. This is too big, so we're going to turn this one into a pulley like that. So, as you can see, um, that used to be two inch, and then that's about an inch, going to about three inch, so that will end up going like that, nice and happy. Now, if you were to just bevel this, that'll work just fine. If you were to just bevel this, that'll work just fine because the, the flat pulley will want to find the groove and it'll just ride up on the, on the height of the groove. The pulley will basically ride up like that and it'll center itself. But when you got a lathe, you may as well go ahead and just do it right. Um, you might even just put a set screw in the back here. Anyway, we got a ton of these. We got maybe 60 of these pulleys, 70 of these pulleys. We're not going to end up using this in this, um, um, the way it is right now. What we're going to end up doing is machining these shafts down and making a very large belt sander. Um, so we're going to use three of these wide and then bevel this one and then bevel this one keep the center one correct. we got a bunch of uh, large uh, sandpaper to use. So Anyway, it's a cool little project. We'll see how it goes. That's just the intro. Okay, um, back from the lathe, um, we machined this down, um, put the grooves into the belt, They're pretty shallow grooves right now, uh, but they hold the belt just, just fine. Um, this is the belt that we got to run this apparatus. Um, this is basically the same as this, um, but we took the, as you can see, it's exactly the same. We took the bearing out of it, and then we annealed this so we can uh, work it in the in the lathe. Um, and then these are the same as well. So as you can, whoops, as you can see, uh, this wants to look like this. So this is going to be our new drive pulley, uh, whereas this used to be our old drive pulley, and we're going to go for a little bit of a size difference. So. That is going to have a set screw put in it right there, and then we're going to go ahead and put that onto the shaft. It needs to be shimmed a little bit, so we're going to shim it with some uh, aluminum pop cans. Who are we kidding? Beer cans. <laughs> we got lots of beer cans. Uh, so this we're probably not going to use, and if this works, this is what we're going to be attaching here. So we're going to be transferring the bearing back in here. Uh, we're going to be tapping uh, probably three holes or maybe four holes to try and get this thing centered. And then we're going to be attaching that in there along with the bearing and that. And then mounting that like that to a surface and then that to another surface. Um, will it work? 
yeah, why not? If this doesn't work for whatever reason, um, I did go to the Princess Auto, or Horrible Freight as you have in the States, and I got two options. Oh, there's another pulley. Got lots of those. So, fucking bag. Okay. So we have a regular old pulley. This is a four inch. Uh, as you can see, it's an inch bigger than this one. This is only uh, about a three and a quarter. So this is just over four. Uh, I've got a aluminum one, which I was also planning on probably using one of these. And then TIG welding there, um, probably using that. And then TIG welding the aluminum on and then using that as a spacer. And then attaching that over here. So then you have your nice V groove. Or possibly this. This hub is removable. It's uh, keyed quite well. Um, we can machine that down so that will actually fit in this bearing here. It's not going to leave us much meat, but you don't need much. This really isn't doing very much. We have lots of these. Why am I doing this? Because they're free. There's a, um, there's a recall where they're pulling all these off and my brother had the presence of mind of saving them so we have a ton of nice bearings fantastic bearings that's very heavy though we may not do this we may I don't know that was eleven dollars that was ten dollars so we'll use this for something else it's really not a big deal not crazy money but now I've got a nice matched set of v-groove pulleys we don't have any V-roof pulleys, so it's better than nothing. Uh, we're going to see how it goes. Do a little bit of testing. So yeah, 3,000 RPM. Nice. So here's how far we've gotten. We've got it balanced. Sort of. It's as balanced as it's going to get. Now the way that we balanced it was... Um, <clears throat> put the uh, bearing on the inside and uh, gave it a little spray paint to see where the uh, bolts were going to line up. Yes. Um, this is the part that we lathed. Um, uh, this should be tightened. So anyway, we uh, sprayed a little bit of uh, spray adhesive onto the uh, drum, um, laid the drum onto the bearing. Uh, put the bearing into the vise and then took a screwdriver like so um, held it up against this and spun it until the screwdriver made contact as you can see the screwdriver is pretty even and then once it made contact we just stacked five or six of these pulleys since we have an unlimited supply of pulleys on the inside and just let it set for a couple of minutes then we took it over to the drill press, uh, drilled a couple holes, drilled a couple holes straight through the pulley, uh, tapped them, and put a couple of uh, three mil. I think they were three mils. Yes. Uh, four mil, I think. Four mil bolts. So a couple of uh, cap head four mil bolts, and uh, it does end up being pretty, um, pretty centered. <coughs> Until we ended up centering that, uh, to center the motor was a completely different uh, uh, problem. Uh, the pulley ended up being a little sloppy on here. Um, the pulley was machined out of one of these uh, uh, parts right here. So the this is not meant to be centered. This is just a cast piece that's then drilled with little tangs folded over to catch the bolt. So we um, machined that in the lathe um, and to uh, center it, we ended up using um, on the back here, I don't know if you can see that, right right there, we put a bunch of shims uh, into the bottom to get it centered. We have two set screws here to center it, um, just get it energized and plug it in. So when you plug it in, it um, just kind of sits there. It vibrates a little tiny bit, but that's more or less just the motor. It's actually very well um, balanced. Very, very, very straight. 
You don't get any kind of deflection. You don't get any rattling or anything like that. That's the set screws. But yeah, it's very, very centered. Turn it off. Uh, for the top here, we ended up just taking a can and cutting shims out of the can, um, sanding the, uh, the paint off of it so it's nice and uh, straight, rolling it up like this, and then pushing it down in there, and then taking little slivers, little pieces, putting it in there, running it, seeing where it's, uh, where it's offset, basically we're using the same principle where you just take a, a point, hold it up to it like this, and then spin it and see where it's touching. As you can see it's very well centered right now. And then just shim opposite where it's the high side. And then once it's shimmed, you just tighten the set screws down all the way. Make sure this is all tight and it's as balanced as you're going to get it. It's as balanced as you're going to need it anyway. Uh, we got a little belt here. Um, now what we didn't realize was that it actually needs to be in about this orientation here in order to function properly. So the motor is going to have to be on the same side as the actual pulley, which isn't really too much of a problem since we have to have a housing around this anyway. We just put the, the motor like that, the pulley like that, and then the housing going this way with the, the blower outlet this way or that way. And that's how far we've gotten with that.